Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm back in North Wales at a very popular seaside resort. I'm in Landidno and I'm going to show you around the resort. Some interesting facts, it's got one of the oldest Punch and Judy shows in the country. It's also home to the Great Orm Cable Car, which is one of the longest in the UK. And of course it's home to one of the most famous piers and longest piers in Wales. Let's go check it out. Fair to say the seafront here is huge lined by hotels as far as the eye can see and um, well the beach here is pebbles but not the kind of pebbles that you might be used to down in Brighton these are humongous I mean just just look at the size of these and it's blooming difficult to walk on in fact you can easily sprain your leg on here oh my god I just saw a massive spider that's unusual. I'm not doing this very gracefully, am I? So you can see the famous pier. There's also a few boat trips going out today. It is actually really nice weather as well. I checked the forecast this morning, was a little bit worried, but I think we're gonna be okay. All the dark clouds are kind of over there. So this area is a little bit like a bandstand where you'll see, uh, I did know, town band perform occasionally up on here. They were doing stuff every Sunday. Whether that's still happening, just let me know in the comments. So you might be able to see the cable car up there. We'll check out to see if that's actually running today. Of course, we'll have a walk on the pier as well. Just look how wide this promenade is. I mean, it's almost the size of what? One lane of a motorway. It's crazy. So legend has it, this was the inspiration for the Lewis Carroll's children's classic, Alice in Wonderland. And it is claimed he wrote part of the book while staying here. Visitors can actually join in the trail of uh, finding these along the seafront. Now, architecturally speaking, all these hotels along the seafront all look pretty much exactly the same. Whether or not they were designed by the same architects or built by the same person, I'm not sure. Tell us in the comments. But at low tide, there is a little bit of a beach here. So it is considered the largest seaside resort in Wales. It was given the title of Queen of the Welsh Resorts as early as the uh, 19th century and it continues to be a big draw for people all over Wales and the UK. So you can head out to see some caves and coves and the lighthouse on this boat. It goes quite regularly actually. It costs you £10 for adults, £5 for children. They also do speedboat rides which uh, are not running today which is a bit of a shame. I was talking about one of the oldest Punch and Judy shows going and it is actually still here, look. See, you don't see many of these around the seaside anymore. Such a shame. So it's, uh, it's good that the tradition still continues here. I was always scared of, uh, was it Punch or Judy? I'm not sure. So what's amazing about the show, it runs for about half an hour and they depend entirely on audience donations. It first started back here in 1860 and the tradition still continues today. And you can even stick your head in to pretend to be one of the characters. So you can see just where we are here on the map. And as I said, the boat literally goes around the Great Orm and checks out the lighthouse too. You can see here that you can uh, you can go up the cable car. We're going to go and check that out in just a little bit. But first, we're going to head on the world famous pier. Now, that is what you call a great fish and chip shop. Look at that. That is amazing, right? Can you see that? The actual chips get sent down a little slide. <laughs> that is brilliant. So I said we're walking on the pier. We're not actually on the pier just yet. We're on the jetty, but it kind of feels like you're kind of going onto the pier. No seafront is complete without a big wheel. You can also do some crabbing off here. So just here is the Grand Hotel. Doesn't look as grand as it once did. In fact, it's uh, bad. It needs a bit of a paint job. 
Let me know if you've actually ever stayed in there. So uh, we're on the pier now. So there's actually loads of stuff on the pier. It's also family run. The pier is about 700 meters, stretches out into the Irish Sea. You get some great views. It's hard to believe I uh, parked my car literally just over there. I can barely see those hotels in the distance. But what's different about the pier is the fact it's not just one straight pier. As we've seen, it kind of begins over there, swings around to the left and then to the right. Look at the view from this side, checking out Great Orm. Looks beautiful in the blue sky. And another unusual thing about the pier, normally you get kind of like seats that are kind of embedded into the pier all the way along. But here you've just got proper benches individually placed and they're all kind of uh, got memorial plaques on them as well, which is a nice touch. Some piers obviously add memorial plaques on the wood here. One thing you won't see on this pier, and that's tarot readers that you seem to get a lot uh, in the UK, but um, on La Lidno Pier, you won't get any tarot readers. I'm not quite sure why that is, but let me know in the comments. All these are little boutique shops, actually. Selling jewellery. This one's selling watches and a few nice clocks. That's my kind of clock. See the boat ships there just going off. Apparently they take around about an hour to go around towards the lighthouse and some of the caves and uh, and back again but it is worth doing to see the uh, the scenery out to sea as i said so many people don't actually ever see that you can see the architecture on this pier is absolutely beautiful this is a bit of an arcade in here you don't see many arcade views like this on a pier, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Now, as you know, I do like to go under piers, but um, I didn't know pier, I can't actually go under because I'd have to swim under it or maybe get a boat. There's a place to get some fish and chips here in the ocean calf. Again, look at the stained glass windows. They look really pretty. So there's the arcade we was just in. And obviously the end of the pier is reserved for people doing a bit of sea fishing. There's a couple of people out there today. I think you can crab off here as well. So on the opposite side to where the fish and chip shop is and the cafe, you've also got a bar here too. Tell you what, it's thirsty work doing this. I could get myself a drink. And they're even selling some of the furniture. I would love this. How much is this? 65 quid, blimey. So unfortunately the cable car's not running today because it's actually quite windy, but I know the tram is. We'll also have a walk up there. So obviously the pier is the big draw here in London, no? But there's also something else which is quite special, which is a tram that you can take up. Let's go and do that. I won't be featuring it today, but if you get on this bus and go to Conway, you can actually go and see the world's smallest house. It's so tiny, here's a picture. The houses here are just so pretty as well, going up Great Orm. So I'm walking up towards the Happy Valley Gardens. Obviously the ski slope and cable car is this way. Like I said, it's not open today because I think the wind is a little bit too strong. So I'm just around the back of the Grand Hotel, walking up to the, uh, the gardens, the lift and the ski slope. So you can walk along the top or just how I was walking along the bottom. It's actually harder to walk on the steps. So I'm walking up this way. You get some great views over the pier and the bay from here. And it must be the happiest place in Wales. <laughs> Happy Valley. Little bandstand here. It's obviously a cafe where you can have a walk around. So this place is actually an old limestone quarry which was uh, closed up back in 1887. And there's also a drinking fountain, which is very unusual, which was placed here back in the 1800s. This is almost like a little mini Stonehenge.
So one of the easiest ways to get up to Great Orm is uh, taking this, but unfortunately, it's not currently open at the moment. In fact, it actually stretches around about a mile. It's one of the longest in the UK. But let us know if you've been up here, because the views you get, totally amazing. So Great Orm is up there. You do get some amazing views, but equally, just here by the, uh, the chairlift, you also get some amazing views of the pier as well just walking up here and looking over towards the hotels. Amazing. If you want to do some sightseeing, these are a great way actually to cruise the coast. But also look at this, the unmissable Great Orm Tour. Look at this, is it a 50s style bus? That is amazing, look at that. It's like stepping back in time. So you literally are spoilt for choice for bed and breakfasts I'll tell you what though, uh, it's half term at the moment of recording, just after Easter, and uh, I could not find a bed and breakfast or hotel at all in my price range. Now that is what you call one roundabout. Look at that. It's worth walking into the town. You've got some amazing old buildings here as well to check out, including the old Palladium, which is now, I believe, a Weatherspoons. But look at this building, it's so beautiful. So I believe this opened up back in 1902, celebrating its 120th year this year. How much is it to go up? I don't know if we're in high season or low season at the moment, I think it's about £9.50. Can I get one ticket please? So I've got my ticket, which is going to take me up the top to Great Orm, and we'll see the views from up there. Thank you. See the train tracks there going up, all the tram tracks. On we go. So we'll try and sit somewhere with a view. Here we'll do, no windows. <laughs> so we're off, and we're moving slowly through the streets. Love that sound, don't you? There's a pub just there. Shama can't get off and quickly grab a drink. I'll tell you what, the views even just going up here are totally amazing. Look at that behind me. I don't know if you can see that on the camera actually. So you get these in San Francisco, you don't get them in the UK, and actually we're stopping for traffic lights, which is weird. <laughs> Everybody's waving in the cars. Just going past the one coming down that wave, say hi. Will they wave? Will you wave? <laughs> <laughs> and look at the views. Wow. Well, it certainly beats walking. So, obviously, this is the halfway station. We need to get on another tram to get right to the top. So there's loads of history here about the, uh, the railway as you go through. So obviously we have to change trains to go to the summit. So we need to head on to this train to go up to the summit. Look at the tracks. Look how they steer it. Press the button, off they go. So it's pretty typical that I got up here and my camera battery died, but the views are absolutely incredible from up here. So there's even a random crazy gulf up here. Look at that, you can actually see all the way out to the wind farm. Look how many wind turbines are out there. Hundreds. And you can see the rest of Wales in the distance. Look at the cloud formations today, amazing. I zoom in and you can see the dramatic coastline of, uh, of Wales all the way around there. Look. See people right on the edge. 
Do share your memories from this gorgeous place in North Wales below. If you want to see more videos from Wales, click on the screen right now. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.